All this to say that CM Punk, of course, in Chicago, got a massive reaction. He addresses Drew McIntyre. It's very brief. The gist of that is he says he took his ball and he went home. And he's interrupted by Paul Heyman, who we all know the history between them two. And you're like, ooh, where's, what's going to happen now? Paul tries to warn him about the bloodline and tells him to basically leave. And of course, CM Punk's not really buying any of that. The bloodline goes out there and CM Punk basically buries them. He tells them like, I forget what the hell he says, but he basically says that they are uh, like a cheap knockoff of Roman Reigns and basically everything that the internet has been saying. So he basically buried them. And I'm thinking, oh, oh that's rough. That's, re that's really rough. How, how are you going to bounce back from that? Right. And um, the bloodline tries to get in there. And it looks like CM Punk was going to be out now, uh, outnumbered for a second. But Cody Rhodes comes out and has his back. And so that is how we sort of closed out this opening segment here. So what did you think of just this portion that we that we covered right now? I think uh, it's been amazing. I mean, it really has. And and you knew that the Drew, Drew McIntyre quitting thing was not lasting very long. And once you knew that Punk was going to be on SmackDown, you kind of knew Drew McIntyre <laughs> was going to be on SmackDown. And I thought the ending, I, I don't know if I've talked about this, I thought the ending to Clash of the Castle was immaculate. I thought Drew McIntyre could not win that match. I don't care where it was. We all saw it coming. Everybody knew this was going to happen. Yeah, but it's the way it happened. And, and Drew McIntyre could not win there. It made no sense. It made no sense once Gunther won King of the Ring. You can't then have Gunther and Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. You have Gunther and, and Damian Priest, so Gunther can have his moment getting that, that World Heavyweight title. And you already had all this build that you had put into Punk and, and Drew McIntyre, including Punk costing him at WrestleMania. So, yeah, if it had been done the exact same way, it might not have come across well. But call back to the camera shots we've talked about. The camera shot there with him running down the ref, the, you never see the, the front of his face until he's doing – this at, at Drew McIntyre. Oh, that was awesome. And then it comes through to this week, and Drew gets his lick back and looks, you know, Drew looks damn strong. He's leaving a bloodied CM Punk on the ground, having to get stretchered out of the damn arena, right? Like, Drew looks strong. Drew has never been bigger than he is right now. But I don't care what title he was holding, what sword he was holding, any other thing he was doing. Drew McIntyre is at the pinnacle of his career right now, doing his best work, and he's doing it with a master on the other side at CM Punk. We can only hope that the match pays this off the way it needs to be paid off. I really hope so. But that attack that Drew McIntyre did on CM Punk, the visual of that, you just mentioned it. I mean, it, it was funny because when I, I think it was like Grayson Waller, they were doing something, right? I was like, all right, whatever. I don't even care about this, whatever, right? And when the freaking uh, garage door lifts up, I was legitimately surprised that it was Drew and CM Punk because I bought in after the whole CM Punk segment and after everything that happened with the bloodline and Paul Heyman, I even thought, oh, damn, I was really off on my prediction about Drew McIntyre being at SmackDown. I was like, what joke's on me? And so I had kind of gotten over expecting to see Drew on the show. So the way they did it with Drew coming out and attacking him there, I thought that was a nice surprise because, again, I had gotten past that and I wasn't expecting Drew anymore. And I love the symbolism of it all because – CM Punk screwed him in Scotland, right? His hometown. So what does he do? He beats this man up, bloody pulp, and basically serves him on a dish to his people in Chicago. I mean, the symbolism of that is phenomenal. I, I, I really love that. It was so simple. I'm going to beat this man and leave him here like a piece of meat. And I also thought it was funny because Drew McIntyre is no longer praying. He is now taking the actions into his own hands. I loved this attack. I think this was my favorite thing that I saw this week in wrestling. The Drew McIntyre attack on CM Punk. And that's saying a lot because I really love the Jacob Fott. Actually, I might be torn on this comment. Once I said it, I started to think twice about it, Robin. I really I, liked Jacob Fatu's I really uh, debut liked too. Fatu. I really liked the Wyatt intro, but... I think you're right. Uh, Punk and Drew is the best thing going in wrestling right now. I, I think all, all, all things considered, it's had time to marinate. Like I just said, Drew is, is doing the best work of his career. Punk really hasn't been back. 
right? Like he came back at Survivor Series, but everything got derailed because of his injury. So he hasn't, it feels very fresh. I mean, it's like all of a sudden he's back again and he's in this red hot program and they did it perfectly. I love the way you described him being, you know, deep dish punk pizza. <laughs> in, in, yeah. in down. But they gave them, they gave them everything you could want because they gave them the celebratory moment at the beginning and you could see it on Punk's face. He just looks happier. I don't know. You know, I don't think it's a show. I don't think you can act that well. He looks like somebody who has found some level of peace in this chapter of his life. Well, we'll see if it stays that way or whatnot. But right now, he looks happy. He looks vibrant. And he was out there with the crowd celebrating and all that. And then all of a sudden, boom. Nope, you're not You're not leaving happy. You're, you're leaving in the back of that ambulance. Now, here's my question, though. Is CM Punk cleared? Because remember, that was the whole thing that he had said in the press conference that he had hoped that CM Punk would be cleared. I mean, sorry, that he would say he would be uh, saying at SmackDown that he was cleared. I mean, we didn't get that. And he got taken out. And who knows when he's going to come back? I do. do you think that this was them saying, eh, we're going to need a little bit more time? I think he's on the precipice of being cleared. And I think as long as it's by SummerSlam. Now, the, the question with Punk, and this is the real worry with Punk, is can he stay healthy? Because he's been hurt a lot in, in recent years. But I think all he has to be ready for is, I don't remember the date for SummerSlam, late August. Is uh, late yeah, August? late August. Yeah. So as long that, that's another two months from now. Is he healthy by then? I think that's all that matters because I think they can get us there without him being in the ring. I hope so too, man, because I want to get the payoff to this. This is my favorite storyline right now. So I'm going to need the payoff to this.